This is Vicki Jo, and right now I'm here with Dario Nardi. And Dario has been doing some amazing work in the field of neuroscience and personality types. So very unusual mm. combination that uh, is a, a new pioneering bit of work. Um, I, I, we've talked about some other aspects already, mm -hmm. and those are available. You can find those. Uh, but I really want to know... I want to delve into this thing, mm -hmm. the brain, mm -hmm. right? And I, what, what what parts of the brain do you study exactly? Mm -hmm. like what's uh, yeah, absolutely. So the equipment I use allows me to study the outer layer of the brain. And as, uh, you know, I, there are really three layers that we can talk about. I mean, there's really the back here, which is the stuff that makes sure you can walk upright and you keep breathing um, and uh, maybe remember your piano lessons. And then beyond that, there's the limbic system, which is sort of in the middle there, and I call that very scientifically the cat-dog brain. Uh, because I always say, you know, it, for people who have pets, they understand. Because if you leave your pet alone at home for the weekend, what happens? Two things happen when you come back. One is that your pet has found some way to get revenge on you. Chew up your shoes, yes. like whatever, yes. because they're angry that you left them, and they're upset, and they're afraid, and... and they're frisky and whatever it is. And then the other is that they're usually overjoyed to see you. So there's these mix of emotions and reactions and like sort of this Greek drama play kind of stuff. And, and so a lot of, and you know, and, and pets aren't dummies by any means. I mean, they, they remember you, they have bonds of affection. There's all of these things uh, that you can teach them tricks. And they, you know, they, they have a life of their own. Uh, and so that, that's, that's that midbrain there. Um, in a very sort of unscientific way, but I like it. I like it. And, uh, and then there's the outer layer of the brain, which is really exceptional to human beings. And uh, this part here, whether you're pointing to here or to here, whatever it is, all around, uh, is, is the neocortex. And that is home to a whole bunch of cognitive skills, of consciousness, of uh, behavioral patterns, emotional patterns, uh, a whole bunch of things. So that is the part that I study. And, and so I get there's the three parts, and then we call that the brain, right? The one right, 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 right. thing, the brain. And I know this is a little hard for me to kind of just wrap my brain mm -hmm. around this. Is, it, do you, is there a metaphor that you work with that helps? Like Oh, yeah, absolutely. So um, the brain as a whole, and by the way, I even want to include the nervous system because oh, we, wow. we have bodies, yeah. and, and unlike that like famous... 1960s Star Trek episode, you take out Spock's brain and you put it in a jar. <laughs> right. uh, you know, our brains don't work that way. Yeah. Uh, we have a nervous system, we have muscle memory and all of those things. Actually, the gut is really our second brain. So it too uh, it does some, uh, as people might say, we have yet an additional brain, uh, when, especially for men, when they uh, are not thinking straight. Um, so there's, uh, what what is... You know, what is it that we can look at in a way to capture it? And I would say that it's like an orchestra. And, uh, or it could be like a jazz band or a rock band, whatever, whatever is sort of your musical taste. But the point is we have these different resources. And you can imagine an orchestra with 50 players. And they all need to play together harmoniously. But in practice, sometimes one of them is off, tired, asleep, whatever it is. I'm not saying that really happens, but we can imagine that. Um, and, and really, it's not just about the individual instruments, it's about how they play together and the music that they create together. And even whether they're a jazz band, improv, that's very different from being classical, highly rehearsed and so on. And that's, uh, I think that the orchestra is a great example. I yeah. love that metaphor because it, it really invites me in and helps me see like range and flexibility and competency mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. it, it really just pulls everything into it and makes it so much more expansive than that singular, you know, the brain, what is it, cogito or something, is that it? Mm -hmm. the, the I think, therefore I, I am. am. Yes, 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 and yes. it's so like one note, so, so fantastic. Now, with that in mind, how much do people vary in their brain? Like, is your brain a completely different orchestra than my brain, or...? Well, I imagine we have some important similarities. Uh, what I do find, because I look at people for two or three hours at a time, over a wide range of things, and, and even while a person might, for 45 minutes or whatever, be in a particular mode, 
that mode is not going to be sustained over such a wide range of tasks <laughs> for two or three hours. And, and then what we can do is we can look at what are the levels of proficiency that people have. And uh, in terms of the amount of activity, uh, which is often related to motivation as well as proficiency, and then also the neural connectedness. So a particular region, like say right here, how well is that region in sync with and coordinating with the other regions that are there? And what we find is actually there's tremendous differences between people. And there's, there's very rarely do I see some person who's like a left brain or a right brain that, that we're all using. I would say it'd be safe to say we're at least using half our brains. And, and uh, we're, it's sort of like a, a toolbox. And um, what are our favorite tools? And, and we can use all of those tools, but what matters is which ones are our favorites and how we use them together and when we use them. It, well, and you're, and you're making me, with the, with the toolbox metaphor and the orchestra metaphor, so often when we talk about the brain, it's like, you're not using your brain. You need to be logical. Like, if we're not using our brain, we're not being logical mm -hmm. or something. So, so bring, bring logic into this. Like, Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm really a, a huge skeptic about logic because um, deductive reasoning, for example, is greatly aided by activity in the, the left frontal region, not the prefrontal, but more the frontal. And that grows out of, uh, like, say, hand movement. You're going like this, it, but it's a mental kind of movement instead. So it's a mentalization of physical movement in a very orderly way. Just as you move your hands or you might count on your fingers, in a sense, you can do that in your head and then it gets translated into mentalization. Logic is, is a tool that we evolved in order to help us make sense of the world. It is not the world. It is one tool that we have. And in fact, easily half the regions of the neocortex, I'm not talking about the limbic system, the neocortex are involved in emotion. Uh, in embarrassment, in curiosity, in enthusiasm, in confidence, uh, in worry, in relief, paranoia. All of these things are actually are at play and they're very much interwoven with our behaviors, with our perceptions. So for example, as we're chatting, I'm noticing facial expressions from you. If you were to give me, say, a negative facial expression, immediately I might feel embarrassment or concern. That isn't two separate parts of the brain or three separate parts somehow interacting. It's actually one region that's involved with analyzing those expressions and then enhancing feelings of embarrassment, which will push me to maybe think, hmm, maybe there's something I should do in order to improve the situation because we are products of evolution. We are there in the world. We're interacting. How can we improve if something goes wrong. Well, and what I, what I love that you're pointing at is that I think we all have like habits, brain mm -hmm. habits, mm -hmm. dare I say, and, and so, um, so there are sometimes recurring thoughts or things we do all mm -hmm. the time mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. mental habits, you know, like, like the Monday sucks kind yeah, of yeah, like, yeah, oh, yes, Monday yes. sucks, right? So if I want to like change up my brain and get and, and break myself out of the Monday sucks mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. of a habit, like, how do I, how do I jump start? Oh, absolutely. So I think most of us already have an experience that there are times that we show a different side of ourselves or we get into right. a different mode, a creative mode, a social mode, whatever it is. And the, I, we try and pin down some of those things with language, but let's just go with the brain for a moment. I would say, first of all, that, that even though people have preferred and sort of non-preferred brain regions in terms of development and connectivity, use um, that we can shift and I mean I see this that people shift from one mode I had one kid who came in and uh, he was really really solidly in this mode speaking of reasoning and logic that was very much this sort of disassociated problem solving state mm -hmm. and we hadn't really met before and, you know maybe he's just having a little bit of he's not comfortable so I realized you know what we need to get him to play a video game even though it was sort of out of the sequence of things, I'm just like, you know what, this, he's, he's just like solid wall. And with the video game completely freed him up from that point onwards, even with yes. everything else. So yeah, we absolutely can, can shift modes, we can get stuck in modes. And the, one of the tools that I use, because of course, how are you gonna know or somebody in the audience is gonna know, like what are your favorite brain regions? 
Uh, I sometimes like to joke, if you scratch your head somewhere frequently or you hold that part of it like this, you know, what, what maybe you're using that part of your brain. Oh, really? Um, but no, but I don't know that. that that's, uh, that's just sort of a fun thing. Fun fantasy. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yep. So what I do is, is I've been working for a while on creating a big brain map. And let's see if we can um, show all of this to the screen here. So, of course, this is just going to be There I am. Okay, how's that? Okay, so there's all these different regions. There's 20 broad regions, and then within there are 60 different subregions, or we say cognitive skills. And this it, just a little exercise gives people an opportunity to locate where their strengths are, where their um, you know clearly non-preferred areas. Sometimes so, people. So these, so these numbers I see match up to things in the graph. So absolutely, so this absolutely. Is, so you sit down and you work with all of this. It's almost like an assessment, isn't it? it well, it's a little bit like an assessment, but um, of course it's relying upon the person's self-reflection. There are right. some ways you can do 360. I also had to be honest in saying, you know, there's things in the brain like neural bridges, for example, and so sometimes you sort of got to push a little thing over into one region or another just for the purpose of the exercise. Right. Uh, right. But it really, because it's drawn from the neuroscience, I mean, not just me, but from the literature, that all of it's out there, that it really provides a full range of skills. Yeah, so, for example, amazing. there's not just like a dance area, because that would be silly. There's actually three or four regions, at least, that contribute in some way oh, I to I love it. that. So you're getting into more, I don't know, granularity or yeah, specificity yeah. than this kind of... That I, I don't like that right brain, left brain yeah, right, thing. Right. Or it's top brain, so, bottom brain, yeah, or whatever it is. You know, yes, yeah, yeah. Off, right, right. So there, yeah. there really is. And, and people really can get a sense of what their skills are. And then, yes, of course, they can build on their strengths. But I would say if you want to change, to answer your question, or change mode, look for the areas that are sort of in the middle. You do oh, some of those, okay. shift to those at times. So you know you already do them. So like if you do music every so often, right, right, do it more. And then look at the things that are involved with music. So like this region over here, yes, it's involved with listening to melodies and remembering melodies and humming tunes and so on. It's also involved in listening to tone of voice, in modifying your tone of voice. Uh, and then beyond that, it's also, you know, what does tone of voice convey? Is the person being phony? Are they being friendly? You know, all of these things are conveyed by tone of voice. And then we get into some evaluations of the person. This region is also associated with anger management. So some folks who've been involved in, how should we say, anger management studies, that, uh, that this region is very involved with that. And so maybe music does soothe the savage beast. And maybe anger is elicited when we detect phoniness in people's voices. So, so you specialize. Yeah, so I hear that and I and I hear that like this this whole piece here really kind of helps you see where your strengths are mm -hmm. and and look at the places where like, oh I could do better there, or I yeah, you know, yeah. if I had a little more music, then mm -hmm. I could change up my brain, I could mm -hmm. let go of that Monday suck kind yeah, of yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's a, and there is a Monday sucks part of the brain too, but that's a, Now, now how do, um, how do people get to do this? Is this just... Oh, well, there's a couple of ways. One is online, if they go to radiancehouse.com, oh. then, uh, then they can find these posters. People are free to order one. If they want to do this for groups, then that's a different step, and they need to go through some kind of training. I have actually a webinar. I do webinars. So do a 90-minute webinar, uh, and the fact that they're pre-recorded, so you can just buy and download it. Uh, and that gives you enough background so that you would be able to understand the results, answer questions, that kind of thing. I love and, this. Uh, and I love the little cartoons yeah, as well. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah, thank so you. So if you want to do this, go to what? Uh, Radiance House? Radiancehouse.com. Radiance and make sure you spell Radiance correctly. <laughs> With a, let's do it. R-A-D-I-A-N-C-E-H-O-U-S-E. -E. Yeah. Yes, right. yeah. Great. And this is, and of course, I'm refining this a little bit all the time because the research also pushes it in new directions, and I'm trying to line it up as best as possible with the actual EEG results, which of yeah. course is, is beyond uh, just being a fun tool, yeah. like is it actually validated, and, and the validation process, the neuroscience is ongoing, so the validation is ongoing. Right. Um, right. And this is also covered by a patent. <laughs> just want to mention that, yes, in perfect. case you want to make your just own. That's perfect. Yeah. Well, this is fantastic, Dario. I love that you've come up with this. This looks like it's fun and interesting. And People, executives love to color, even on the floor. Oh, I love that. Yeah, That's great. they do. That's great. Absolutely. And then folks can put these up and they can compare uh, either, you know, within, say, the same personality a profile, 
um, within uh, the team. So where are the team strengths and weaknesses? Wow. You know, so is there like a team brain? Yeah, there's a whole team. Yeah, where are their blind spots? Building thing here. Wow. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. Couples. Where are those communication and matching points? If I you're, think I need those. Yes, right. So <laughs> sometimes couple will discover that they only have one or two regions in common. But I, that's, I don't think that's typical. I, you know, we really actually can bridge a lot with each other. So it's that's know. fantastic. Yeah. So see, neuroscience can be fun. It can be fun. Yes, that's right. Well, yeah. Thanks so much Absolutely. for sharing this, Dario. And uh, and go to Radiant's house and get yours. Marvelous. Thank yes. you. Thank you.